without knowing it, Gus has set up what I wanted to say to you. And we're going to get into a lot of detail about the equipment today. Right now, we're just setting the stage. But in college, I did very, very poorly in English composition. In the second year I was there, a professor pulled me aside after I handed in a report and says, uh, Ken, I just want you to know, you've got the potential for being a really good writer. And I said to myself silently, I'm out of here. To hell with you. I'll never come back to this. Well, I found myself later on editing for Ellington Darden. And he and his retired Latin teacher from high school beat me up royally. In order to be a good writer, as any writer knows, you've got to submit yourself and be willing to write something over and over and over, and you've got to have someone that is critical, harshly critical. Now, what Gus alluded to, if didn't outright say, was that as you take your beginner client from step A and beyond, you're going to start off doing a lot of talking. Because if they make a mistake, it is your fault. Brenda and I have a five-year-old Shih Tzu, which we truly adore. And early on, I admitted that if this dog poops on the floor, if she gets hurt, if she hurts somebody else, whose fault is it? Mine! And that's how it is with instructing. And as they become more confident with what you're trying to get them to do. Now, they're trying to figure out what you want them to do, and you're trying to figure out what they can do. And as time goes on, talking gets in the way. I had an instructor working for me two years ago who was introducing a new client. And this was a lady who inadvertently said, okay, every time you made a statement. Okay. 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 Well, in the course of teaching the pull-down exercise for the very first time, well, I went around the corner. The, the, the gym is sort of U-shaped. And I went around the corner so I could hear what was going on. During the course of saying, of, of teaching the pull-down, I sat back there and counted the number of times she said okay during his instruction. It was 65 times. Now, every time she says that, she's not hearing what he has to say. She is blunting his information from getting through. And right from the get-go, one of the instructor's jobs is to say, don't answer me. Now, if they do it again, the instructors like to say, well, if I, if I correct them on it again, they're going to not like me or they're going to feel threatened. No, you got to do it again and again and again until it stops. That takes a little courage on the instructor's part. Now, during the last year or two that I was at Nautilus, there was a textbook published. It was called The History of Resistance Exercise. Now, I'm getting to my major point with this. What is wrong with that title? Well, there were a lot of things wrong with the, the text, if you had read it, which I didn't, but Darden did, and he told me about it, was that this comprehensive history of exercise said absolutely nothing about Nautilus or Xander. And it any of you don't know who Gustav Zander was, we'll look him up. So, I went to Darden and I said, 
how, how, how could this be? A textbook on the history which doesn't have Xander or Arthur or Nautilus in it. He says, we got to understand, Ken, that on the academic level, that if it wasn't performed with studies in, in a peer-reviewed journal, it does not exist. Well, any thinking person knows this is ridiculous. But that is not where I'm going with this. <clears throat> We're trying to be technical in a field that is traditionally not technical. Some of you may have heard me make this illusion before, but my sense of the entire exercise community. And when I say the exercise community, I'm including general fitness and exercise physiology and athletic training and physical therapy and general uh, physical education, the entire gamut. If, if we take a critical thinking course, and almost everyone in this room has had one at some time in their college career, we learn in general that there are two steps to solving any problem. The first step is to brainstorm. You, you, you identify the problem and then brainstorm solutions. Write down any possible thing, no matter how crazy, no, no matter how off the wall, correct, wrong, whatever. Write it down. Do not apply any of your prejudice to it. Write it down. Gather as much from all sources, be as eclectic as you can. Step B, you're, you're now going to take all of those possibilities, infinite as they might be, and apply critical analysis to them. And you're going to throw out 99% of them. The entire fitness field, the way I perceive it, is that we've got step A on steroids, and step B does not exist. And it is in this area, this realm, this situation, that, that we're trying to do something sensible. 